Welcome back. My friend Steven down at Beating Drum didn't answer his phone, so I'm going to have to reschedule that. But uh, to be honest with you, the interview wasn't necessarily timely in that uh, Nor North Dakota has uh, changed their name, their nickname. And I, and I wonder about this, University of North Dakota. Uh, and I've wanted to talk to the people on Beating Drum Radio Show. Find them on Facebook. And in the great debate about Native American nicknames and imagery, uh, they have been a group, uh, actually Oklahomans with Native American uh, ancestry, who have said, wait a minute, we're honored. And they're very concerned about the phasing away of, you know, shall I say, Indian nicknames, as politically incorrect as that may be. Um, the fact of the matter is, they're concerned. They look at Dobbins Men and Indians, Catawba Indians, Cleveland Indians, Chicago Blackhawks, as being very honorable, as being people understand our culture when we have this. Uh, the nickname is, let's see here, they are changing now uh, from the fighting from the uh, fighting Sioux to the Fighting Hawks. They have actually replaced the, and that was done a few years ago, I should point this out, but they have also replaced the logo of the university with a new logo this past week. And essentially, the old logo looked a lot like the Chicago Blackhawks. And the new one, they feel, kind of looks cartoonish. Looks a lot like Moorhead State. Put it, you know, in another... Uh, just to, to give you an analysis, uh, or an analogy, I guess. Not an analysis, but an analogy. I'll get the words right. Anyway, uh, I do. I kind of feel with them. I just think that finding hate where it doesn't exist is very unhealthy. And it's a product of the PC culture when you're trying to find hate where it doesn't exist. It's Orwellian. And as I've said before, and by the way, if you want to go on our 1420 NBC Sports Radio Tri-Cities uh, Facebook page, you'll see back on, I think it's January 29th, and I have a conversation with them about the Indians' decision after this year to take Chief Wahoo off their uniforms. Uh, they'll still be selling the logo, but they will not have it on their uniforms. And uh, just, you know, is this healthy? Is it healthy to brand the franchise that broke the color barrier in the American League when the individual who recently just passed away in December who actually drew the logo and said, guys, I have no hateful intent, anything like that. I was commissioned by Bill Veck to draw a caricature. Is it healthy to demonize artwork? I think not. And I very much defend, you know, well, what if I'm offended? You don't have to look at it. You don't have to root for that team. And we do, I think, have to look at intent, which is clearly not to be bigoted. If anything... It is the Orwellian cleansing that is bigoted. That's my take on that. So hopefully we'll be able to have them on here at another time. They've actually done a lot of research. Uh, the motivation to change nicknames has often been financial. And uh, one of the reasons has been that a lot of times companies will go to a team, say a high school team, with a Native American nickname Hey, change your name to be more PC, and we'll sell you this new gear. Yeah, that happens a lot. Virginia Tech, their football program, is in a bit of a pickle. Have you heard about this? Defensive coordinator Galen Scott has resigned after an affair was revealed on Twitter. 
This happened uh, several, I haven't had a chance to get to this. This actually broke uh, back on April the 30th, so forgive me for being a little late. But uh, Scott was promoted by Justin Fuente in January. He stepped down after the husband of the woman Scott had an affair with during recruiting trips, revealed the affair on Twitter, and tweeted at Virginia Tech, Fuente, and the media outlets. Uh, the sender of the email was not revealed. Scott resigned uh, a little more than a week ago, saying it was time to step away from football and focus on my family. You think? Saying that he made a mistake. Uh, there has been, if you want to follow this on Twitter, there's plenty of opportunity to do so. Uh, there have been, let's see here. Fuente and Scott have been together since the early 2000s. They coached together at Illinois State. Now, this has been a real rough time for local football coaches. I mean, Marcus Satterfield leaving as the offensive coordinator at ETSU to go to Baylor for an off-the-field entry-level position. Now we have Galen Scott resigning from, uh, the, from Virginia Tech. Uh, a few days ago and such. I, I you know, it, it's a black eye. It does not look good for Virginia Tech. But then again, uh, we're going through a whole thing politically where some people are saying, who cares when similar allegations are made of the president? I guess the uh, situation we actually had back in the 90s, a situation where this sort of activity did not take down a president. Uh, it took down a defensive coordinator. Say what you will. I'll just uh, look at this. I'm, uh, you know, Virginia Tech, how much will it hurt? I don't know. Scott, obviously, Virginia Tech has done well with Justin Fuente, so a change in his staff may not look be a positive. However, you've got to also understand he was just the defensive coordinator, just like what I tell Tennessee fans from a strictly how-does-this-affect-the-ball-club standpoint, people are willing right now to, uh, you know, I'm reading, I'm full on board with Jeremy Pruitt. Jeremy Pruitt is the man to lead Tennessee football back. I like this lineman, David Swanby's bringing in this weekend. I like that, but he hasn't won a game yet. Maybe it's better to have a wait-and-see attitude instead of doing the same thing you did for Butch Jones, for Lane Kiffin, and Derek Dooley, which is jump off the deep end as soon as they were hired and start saying they're going to be the next Vince Lombardi. Same thing here. Virginia Tech hadn't played a game with Scott as a defensive coordinator. How it's going to impact them, we don't know. It will, however get a lot of cheap jokes at the Hokies' expense. Ed Bouchette, Pittsburgh Post-Gazette, talking NFL when we come back. Maryland, 1420.